Dieu, s'il vous plaît. Hello, welcome everyone to Climate Conversations. It's a series of dialogues with FXB climate advocates around the world who are addressing climate challenges in their communities. So we've interviewed uh, young advocates from India, from Kazakhstan, from many different countries. And today we have Pranto Paul from Bangladesh. He also serves as an FXB climate ambassador, helping to spread the mission and vision of the FXB climate advocates program and provide guidance and input into the program to better serve young people around the world. So today we're gonna to learn about Pranto and his work in Bangladesh. Yes, welcome. Welcome Pranto, thank you so much for being here and thank you for being such an active member of our FXB Climate Advocates community. You recently helped us interview many applicants for the Fall 23 program and it was just incredible. Um, to have the support of our alumni and our ambassadors, as well as actually I got really great feedback from the people you interviewed that they really enjoyed the interview and learned a lot about the program. So, and it's been really like just a pleasure to work with you and always, um, you're always so responsive and committed. So Pronto, first tell us a little bit about yourself, how old you are, where you're from, and just so we can get to know you better. Oh, thanks Karina. So hello everyone, I'm Pronto Paul and I'm from Bangladesh. I'm 25 years old, actually, today is my birthday, so it's a coincidentally nice, uh, it's a night meeting here, and I'm currently doing my master's degree at uh, at Anthropology in Chazila University of Science and Technology, and beside that, I'm running some climate action projects through my organization and with the young leaders around the country of all over the eight divisions. Thank you, Pranto. So tell us a little bit, well, actually, before you go into your climate action project, can you just tell me, um, what when you were growing up, did you see any uh, impact of climate change in your community? Did you learn about climate change and how you really became really passionate about this issue? Okay, so in Bangladesh, specifically in the South Asian region, like Bangladesh, Pakistan, and the Indian, Indian continent, is a, and there are most changes for the climate changes actually, because uh, from when I was a child, I saw uh, like so many butterflies, one of the thing. And right now, actually, I, I can't see any butterfly everywhere. So it's an effect of climate is how that uh, from the time being from the ages or from the decades where we are deforesting, we are cutting the trees and all that. And the temperature is rising actually. And do you know that the climate change is affecting all over the world and that's why the SDG 13 is focusing on the climate action mainly and we FXP climate advocates are also work, working following this and most importantly and there is a statistics that by 2050 in every seven people seven people to one people will be displaced for the climate change in Bangladesh so it's a huge, huge change for the climate. And there are, as I am residing in the Silet in Bangladesh, there are so many rain when it's time for the rainy season and so many like warm temperature when it's uh, for the summer. So it, it's, uh, I, I kind of see that like it's changing. Like it, it was not that before or uh, like there was a, when it was the winter season, it was, some kind of cold but not that much like i am feeling right now personally so this actually initiated myself for those some kind of climate action and and that's why i am running my climate action project and trying to do something for the climate and the environment thank you pronto so tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing and you could share your presentation i'm really eager to learn more yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So actually, I'm going to share a slide focusing my climate action project that how we are working and what we are doing. OK, so this is uh, so this is the Can name. Can you just of put our... it in slideshow mode? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. you. Because, yeah. So then that's...
I think it's open now, right? Um, it's still in the slide. Oh, yes, yes, perfect. Right now, perfect. Thank oh, you so much, Pronto. Go ahead. Thank. Okay, okay. So let me introduce my project. Actually, the project is called the School of Impossible, and the School of Impossible we are focusing empowering young women to fight the climate change in Bangladesh. And secondly, what is the School of Impossible? So the School of Impossible mainly focused to promote the inclusive climate education through play-based learning and participatory experience. And the adolescents and youth mainly focused on women actually, and between uh, 13, to, uh, 13 to 30 years from all over the Bangladesh. And this project has been initiated by Like to Life, one of my organization, which is a youth-led organization in Bangladesh and working, working uh, with the eight divisions young leaders of Bangladesh. And most importantly, before starting or how we did this, I wanted to, I wanted to focus that we have already trained five thousand plus young leaders for for this project. And we have planted uh, around 3,000 trees all over the Bangladesh to combat the climate change. And it was a huge achievement for us because we did it only for the six months. And like all of the 5,000 young leaders, they have trained, we have, we have some training of trainers and then we have planted the trees. And actually we have initiated our project by partnership with our young with our young organizations and how we did this. So first, <clears throat> we had conducted some numerous online session with the young individuals. And in this session, we actually focused that some play-based learning and we had fostering awareness and engagement on uh, SRHN and climate action because we always believe that uh, SDG3 and SDG13 is correlated in everywhere. So SRHR is one of our main focus and from this climate action because in Bangladesh, I think it's all over the world like SRHR is changing or sexual and reproductive health rights or health is changing because of the climate change and climate change is affecting the people's health actually that's why we are correlating or we are relating this this term and secondly we we had initiated an a leadership training focus on environmental education leadership training which is in short EELT so this leadership training had the four modules and these modules have included some kind of critical thinking for the young people because we, we always believe that if the people or if the young generation of this country or all over the world can critically think about about some topic or about a term they can they can reach anywhere so that's why we have created a module for critical thinking like how you can think a topic critically as example uh, uh, we are throwing plastic uh, in our arena so if we throw plastic in our arena we have we have to think critically that what the plastic will do so um, there was a statistics that every year in the south Asian continent around the people every people are eating around 3.4 kg plastic and i was just astonished that people are eating plastic and then i searched some kind of things and it was basically for them for the term microplastic actually like we are throwing plastics and it is mixing with all of the environmental resources and it is mixing with our foods our vegetables even the fishes even the oceans so once a lifetime a person is taking 3.4 kg plastics uh, through various resources and it's huge it will uh, definitely affects his or her, her health actually so there's why we are focusing on the critical thinking and secondly we are mainly focusing on the leadership training so the leadership as i think as we thought that if if i can think critically then i can be a good leader so a leader can think critically and can manage his arena and can manage his team basically to lead something or to lead some trainings. And thirdly, we had focus. We we had uh, we had focus on the environment. So 
why the environment? We had trained them about the environment, like what's the present condition of Bangladesh environment or the South Asian environment. Because as we, as our organization or our initiative is located in South Asia, so. Firstly, we had focused on the South Asian environment. We had compared with their past environment, present environment. And most importantly, the we had a, a initiated a training like one of our FXB, FXB had advised with Ocean Golden uh, recently that about the EN climate road tolls. So I think EN climate road tolls is basically engaged with our program. A program like it's kind of a huge thing like how we can think about our environment or what what is affecting our environment so this three module actually works for this environmental education education leadership training and we had empowered around 5,000 youth volunteers and all over the Bangladesh and thirdly we had an we had an um, offline event as you know that in 2020 there was a pandemic effect all over the world for the COVID. So we couldn't arrange the training session offline or in person. So we had conducted some uh, training session online. Then we had gathered these leaders, these 5,000 leaders in a place where we, we had arranged a festival for change and it was featured an inspiring art competition. But this art commission uh, was focusing on the young women health as a richer and the basically climate action, like how climate action is affecting their health or their sexual and reproductive health. And there were some panel discussions and some uh, and some art therapy. And uh, there are many, many programs in this event. It was a three days event in the Cox's Bazaar, Bangladesh the longest beach in actually. And that is what actually uh, together participants to express their concern and aspiration, aspiration creatively about the climate change. And, and in this event, after this event, we had, we had installed art in the three open spaces across the four coastal division four coastal division in Bangladesh actually actually not four like around the most if I think broadly there are three coastal divisions like the Kolna, Borishal and Itagang division and one of the we have specifically it is like we had focus on the Cox's budget there's a we are focusing on the four coastal division but Cox's budget actually included in the Chitagang division in short so this has captured the public attention and drawing attention to the urgency of the environmental conservation so now i want to represent some of our pictures about our event like we had some media coverage and absolutely the media coverage was amazing uh, amazing result for us actually like people all over bangladesh or we had we had the media coverage of for this some kind of international international newspaper and some Bangladeshi newspaper and also some uh, Bangladesh Bangladeshi media channels. So they had covered our event actually, and uh, we had, we got so many responses. Like uh, some universities uh, then breached us for giving them the training about the environmental education, and it was a huge achievement for us. We think actually, and and as you can see that. <laughs> There are two or three pictures about the tree plantation program, like we had planted 3,000 trees. And in the and at the end, in the right side, like you can see some art therapy. Like we had a we had a therapy. Like we believe that if you can art anything, you can like what you are thinking actually. And it was our focus. Like. I am thinking about something. I am thinking about environment. Then we told the participant that, that you should express that in your art, like art anything if you want, relating climate change or whatever you want. And it was a huge response. And there are some another, another positions like the panel discussion, some pictures. And as you can, one of the art, like a girl is uh, drawing a figure. Actually, then we talked to her. Actually, she is the member of our project and she is the lead member of our project. Like um, when she art this, uh, she was thinking that this is she or this is, this is her face. And you can see that she is arting where she is putting the pen, uh, there's a flower. Like every girl is a flower. And 
it is represent it is representing mainly that the climate change basically is focusing the women sexual and reproductive health main most importantly and there are our team and there are our some uh, in person training sessions where we had arranged some some trainings the public universities in bangladesh so this is mainly the school of impossible project in short i am i had described and now i want to introduce a an initiative called eco prescription and as i think you are you are relating why eco and prescription so actually eco prescription is an initiative that was empower children youth to be a climate advocate and eco prescription means like eco means there is some relating to sdg 13 and prescription focused on the good health and well-being so we are focusing on the health and climate change specifically and our slogan will be the where health and nature converse so actually what is the eco prescription the eco prescription will mainly develop some ideas or develop some initiatives and the fxb team or the FS, fxb fxb international uh, like is helping here so to 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 empower the children and youth to be a climate advocate in bangladesh as i am working as the climate ambassador and it will the main two focus will be the eco perception will be the eco focused mobile games like why eco focused mobile games actually we are doing some kind of trainings and we are empowering youth but why the mobile games the mobile games actually as we know that a children or a youth actually they are some kind of for the availability of mobile phone or some uh, technical technical facilities they are engaging more for their uh, with their mobiles or their laptops so we are thinking that if we develop a mobile games focusing the climate change like to advocate them or to empower them like through the games like how climate change is occurring or how climate change is affecting our world and actually when they score some points like through the mobile games they can indirectly contribute to the environment how like if it, if they are scoring point to the mobile games in return we are planning that if they are sending or if they send some email or some whatsapp messages to us like about this and that they have uh, scored this kind of point so we, we we will fix that if we score like exact as example if you score 5000 points we will plant 10 trees in return uh, in our locality so actually we know that reforestation idea is the main source to fight the climate change like we are we are cutting down the trees and there is no enough trees around our arena so this is the main term or the main ideas of the eco focus mobile games they they will scoring points and in return we will plant trees like how and the second point is by their scoring points we will motivate them by certificates or some kind of eco-friendly gifts actually to play play these games and score more points so that we can we can plant more trees and the combating the climate change with the help of the artificial intelligence actually one of our main focus will be for the eco prescription like how it is affecting uh the health and how it is affecting the environment for the climate changing and as you know the artificial intelligence or ai is a growing sector right now in this present role so we are thinking that the artificial intelligence will create a great impact so and at last there are some kind of that as i am working as the fxp climate ambassador like this is my contact list or email you can contact with me anytime if you want to work with us or work with the fxb because actually i am representing fxb here so this is thank you thank you so much thank you so much pronto so i have some questions for you let's start with the school of the impossible why that name what inspired you to name the project that way and what does it okay. mean <laughs> so there's a story behind that like when we the team the light to life is working to developing this project like they 
we are thinking. And it was actually that during the COVID time, like when 2020, we had developed this proposal and we have initiated this project 2021 after, right after the COVID. So when the school of impossible, we, I actually think that we are in a meeting like online, we all are the, all are in home for this and we are thinking like what, what can be the name? What can be the name? And some of things like, then we think that like we are educating someone. So it can be school. And why impossible? Like for after this COVID and after the worldwide pandemic, like we are doing something for the climate. So it's not, it's not impossible. And as you can see that the impossible, the I am is in the bracket. So actually school, school of possible is so we are focusing on the impossible, like there is nothing called impossible. If we can work hard, everything is possible. Thank you. And why focus on women and girls? How does climate change impact women and girls? Okay. The uh, women and girls impact, and actually, this is focusing in as I am also working for the SRH sector. So I I want to relate these things that they are from my some qualitative research part or some kind of things. I have personally found that that women and girls are getting affected by the climate change. Actually, in the South Asian continent, most mostly even even the even the gender is violence has also increased for the climate change and. It's a huge in this arena, like there is an agriculture based country or in Bangladesh or India or Pakistan and this continent, agriculture based country. So, man, so if there is some kind of effect for the climate change in this arena and like if you if you think that agriculture is getting fall down. So as you know that the patriarchal some kind of uh, positional things are doing here. So from the actually from the history of this of this arena of the world Indian Indian area actually, so this is actually affecting the women's health and the some gender based violence like physical violence and intimate partner violence. There's are affecting the girls and women in this area. And most importantly, another thing I want to introduce that that in the education sector like and that sexual and reproductive health is still a taboo right here for the culturally construction so some kind of culturally construction or some environmental things like this these things like srh or sexual and reproductive health is still a taboo and for this the uh, the school going children are not growing up to know that what is sexual health or what is the reproductive health and how I can control my reproductive health or what will be getting, how actually, how they can share. Like, as an example, if a girl get the menstruation period started, she can't easily share with her family members for their cultural tables here. So she is actually sharing with her friends. And sometimes she got the misleading information about the menstruation circle. This is actually affecting their health. Um, yeah, that was kind of my next question. Can you tell us a little bit, I guess, about the broader movement of sexual reproductive health rights and what it aims to accomplish? Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't hear can you. Can you uh, uh, can you again explain what are sexual reproductive health rights as R H R? Okay. What right. is it, and what well, is, like do you aim to accomplish? You know through that. Okay, okay. great. Yeah. So the sexual and reproductive health is actually basically focus on the a person, whoever he is, like who's his gender or not, like how he is dealing with his sexual health or his reproductive health, right? If he is considered him as a man, he has also reproductive health, as you know, like if there is a woman, she is also reproductive health. And there is also some genders, as we know that everyone has the sexual and reproductive health and the sexual and reproductive health and rights actually focus on on this term that how am i how am i achieving these rights like every person has the right for his health and it's a basic human right to get to get the to get the health right like some kind of health insurance and some kind of this but when the cultural chebu or the cultural construction is limiting my arena or the limiting my area to get this access from there. Like I can't get easily or 
I want to share from my experience that when I was a child for the cultural taboo, I can't easily share with my family members about, about this or about the term quote unquote sex. Like it was kind of a huge thing for the cultural table. Like it was kind of negative thing was there. But right now this is changing. The government of Bangladesh is working so hard to promote the sexual and reproductive health. And it is huge appreciatable. And most importantly, the most of the NGOs, INGOs are working simultaneously to promote the sexual and reproductive health size and to introduce the actually the school going children or the college going children about the sexual and reproductive health size. And from my side, I am working as a sexual and reproductive health activist and the climate activist. Like I am relating sexual and reproductive health and the climate aligning together. And as an anthropology student, I want to see the things, some kind of in depth actually so from my quality research actually i had focused some marginalized communities like who are the urban people the urban people are getting access to their health they had the facilities they had the hospital but what about the marginalized people like in where i am staying right now silet bangladesh it's a tea garden area so there is a community of, uh, they are the tea garden communities and the tea garden communities actually, actually most of the tea garden are from, are far from the main town, where is the main hospital is, is situating. So actually, so they can get the enough healthcare access from here and, or if they, if a woman want to deliver a child, she had to come from some kind of one or two hour roads, like it will, it will take one or two hours to reach the main hospital. So I am working in this sector as my research program. And like we had uh, developed a research, a quality research question. And, and uh, in the November, we will present this in the American Anthropological Association Conference in Canada about the outcomes. And also I am working personally with some, uh, the promoting of SRHR access information around the uh, children of this community or around my around my community by some kind of uh, by sign of educational training or some kind of work, workshop and also my organization the like to life is also actively promoting the, the SRHR by uh, conducting training and we are also celebrating international menstruation day or world contraception day or abortion day everything here like as much as we can. Yeah, thank you. I think it's really powerful, the link between climate and health. And then of course, the, what you focus on, which is sexual reproductive health, because certainly during whether it's climate emergencies, um, you know, like floods or extreme heat or things like that, uh, you know, the, uh, the access to health services is limited and women, you know, certainly are the ones who are most responsible for the household and for responding to those emergencies. So I think that, yeah, that focus is really critical and really interesting. And it's an area that uh, I, your research is really valuable because I know there's not a lot of sort of really research on the on the connection between climate and sexual reproductive health. And I wanted to ask, it was so beautiful to see the photos of the young women uh, participating in the workshops. Why <laughs> art? Why do you think art is so important for anyone, but especially for young people to express their thoughts, emotions, and, you know, like as a way to start their advocacy? Oh, actually, actually, Art is actually important, like the aura of art, or if you can, the Mona Lisa from the Leonardo da Vinci. Like the Mona Lisa is from the early 16th, then from still now the 21st century is an art, like a piece of art. So actually, we had this idea for this art. If we want to say anyone, like speak, speak up or speak up about your about your health. How is your health or how is your mental peace is going or your mental health is going? But we focus that if we can say or if we if we told the young women to add something, like what she's thinking. And there was actually open floor. And there was we had uh, we had the art session in the sea beach area in the Cox's Bazaar. And there was a beach in the side, and they were arting like anything if you want to art and they are like what they are feeling right now there were are some kind of depression things or frustration things like 
my mental condition is not good so they are they were are some kind of these things and some of them are that my area or their area like how climate change is affected and most importantly they are where some school going children and they are so well that some kind of like I actually the eco prescription idea came from my mind from this thing like I am focusing on the children mainly and how I think about that actually I want to tell that, that when the school going children are in this program and they actually are that they are from the past and present like they were around seven or eight years old but they were acting that uh, saying that when I was three or four years old, there were so many butterflies, but right now there is no butterfly. So they were adding two parts of action, like one place without butterfly and another place with butterfly. Like there is actually the effect of climate change and there is some birds or anything, the animals or the plants actually, they are growing, they are already gone for the climate change. And this has came to the idea. Uh, that I can do something for the children. That's why I am focusing on the eco-focused games. Like in this continent, I know that the children are getting access to the access to the mobile phone. Like if they are spending their time the mobile phone, why not this environmental things? They can learn about the environment actually. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, for eco prescription, I guess I love how innovative it is to use technology. You're right. Children are spending time on phones, so they may as well do something, you know, that's educational and productive. What do you think is the role of technology or how come like advocates leverage technology to um, for climate action, to address climate change, to mobilize others? Yeah. OK, OK. So technology is the main thing that like um, in in right now in the present world or after the COVID mainly, like when the people were in their home, they got or the children started to started to work on their laptops or their mobile phones, like for their online classes, actually, main focusedly or some kind of exams, online exams or online quiz. And now the COVID period is gone. But as we know that around the one year we had created this habit to use the mobile phone, to use the laptop. And specifically, they are the children or they are the young, like they can't control, sometimes they can't control. As, as an adult, we can control ourselves. Like I can use my laptop or mobile phone, but as a children, they are they are heavy table for the past one years to use the mobile phone or to the laptop. And sometimes it directs in the negative way to them. Like they are accessing to the internet from some kind of negative things or negative news that is eventually affecting their mental health. Eventually affecting their mental health and creating some pressures for the children and the young people. So the climate advocates can use these things actually. Like as I am developing the uh, eco-friendly games, they can use the technology. They can use the technology or they can uh, they can develop some eco-friendly technology, like not always the mobile phone, not always the laptop. Why I can develop yes, an application like a mobile phone, which will which will train the young children. Like, and I want to say the uh, the young leaders that you should focus on on some kind of gaming things, like or some attractive things, like when children will get. As you know, the children are always curious about the things like what will happen, what will happen. And now if we if we focus on the game things that like if we create some state, like if you follow the step, you can go to the next step. And this step will create some environmental education, like about the environment, about the waste production or the plastics or their health, actually. So uh, the climate advocate can use these things. I think uh, to create some awareness or to mobilize the children and youth. Yeah, thank you. I think technology is really powerful. And if it's being used for negative things, we might as well use it for positive things as well, right? Yes, it's there absolutely. and it has the capabilities for sure. Yes, it's going to be impossible. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Everything is possible. Yeah, it's, yes. it's a powerful tool. Um, you know, I think the only thing that I would sort of add from my perspective is maybe like, 
to complement the technology with an in-person, like, so there's some, a game, but like go to your local park and look at the flowers, something. So the technology is complementing like a real life experience with nature, but certainly technology is there. We're all on our phones, you know, and I think I've even seen in the most like, you know, remote communities, you know, people will pay for whatever amount of, you know, data. And so, I mean, certainly, ubiquitous and we might as well use it as a tool for education and in you know certainly for us at fxb when fxb climate advocates program started we really you know thought and you know we're going to work with young people so it's going to be a new york based program for young people in the area where we're going to meet and do workshops it wasn't even even on our radar at all to do zoom sessions or anything like that and it was really when COVID hit and at first we were so disappointed that we couldn't do the kind of in-person leadership development, the beautiful, you know, workshops that you do, like we couldn't do that. But then the upside was that, you know, we have advocates from all over the world and we understand that it's a limited, uh, of course, experience, a virtual connection, but a really integral one, right, that gives us a connection to people and places we otherwise couldn't have, but it just can't be the only, I guess, like, you know, experience that advocates or, have, you know, that we as people have. So it's an important tool as long as it's complemented with, you know, really on the ground community engagement. So yeah, I really like the eco prescription idea. And maybe you can even reach out to our advocates for ideas of games and maybe they've seen interesting things and how it could be adaptable to, actually one of our um, from, uh, alumni from the summer programs, a 12 year old young man from UAE, but he's from Pakistan and he has this online curriculum, Earth Warrior. So that could be a great thing that could be on a yeah, mobile great. app. So, you know, and he, there's like a doll and characters. It's very, it's actually really targeted for younger children. I mean, he's 12 himself. So that could, you know, there's, um, that could be something interesting to collaborate. But I, yeah, I love the idea. So thank you so much. Wait, I want to ask you, how did you learn about the FXB Climate Advocates Program? Why did you join? What did this experience mean to you? Okay, so FXP, actually FXP is growing great. Like when I saw, I applied for the LinkedIn actually. I saw your post maybe, like you were recruiting some uh, summer cohort advocates. Then I applied and I got some sessions like with uh, our the past climate ambassadors and they represent how about their project. And as you know that I, I am already passionate it about the climate change and the health. So FXB is a great scope for me to work for the climate change and all of that. Right now, I am working with the ambassadors and every ambassador is, is a great, like everyone has a great plan. Even I am sharing this in my community that like there are some uh, ambassadors and they are doing great from their perspective and their community. Like as an ambassador, I am doing something in, in this another world, he is doing something or she is doing something and FXB is happening everyone. And that's the great thing for the FXB international. And to be an FXB advocate or FXB climate ambassador, like I'm honored or I'm grateful to you and the FXB to give me the chance to work for the climate change and to work for my community and eventually we think we'll go further and more young advocates will join with fxb team and we'll make a happier world are there any specific skills or knowledge that you gained from the program that was incredibly useful or that you put into practice in your work Oh, yes, that's right. The actually the useful things, actually, I want to say that after joining the FXB, that term came to my mind about the eco-prescription. Like eco-prescription is a recent thing about after joining this program when I did the session or about when I trained with the Potion Golden about the Andrew tools it was useful it was used useful and all the all the participants still now it's saying to me to arrange another workshop for them with the social so from these things or from this from these ideas i now i critically thought about this idea like how i can include something to the community for myself and then then i developed the idea of eco prescription and now right now i am working to with this with the fxb international Oh, that's great. So En-ROADS is an online tool that someone developed. 
for young people or anyone really to play around, to think about how different climate policies, how that would impact carbon, uh, you know, greenhouse gas emissions, what would have more impact, what would have less impact. So if those tools can be developed for, you know, like a more educated audience, you know, because you have to be like somewhat knowledgeable to really see, understand those graphs. Why can we use technology for children or, you know, to really develop more accessible material? Yeah, that's so great to learn that that's how you got the idea. And so from attending our one of our six workshops for the summer cohort, you organized a workshop for 60 uh, young people from Bangladesh to learn how to use this tool. And hopefully yeah, we can organize more. That's really powerful. Um, I guess I have like two more questions for you. So one is, you know, with a conference of parties approaching in November and, you know, the UN General Assembly was just happened in New York. Um, what do you think uh, should be priority climate policy in your country and globally to address climate change? Okay, so to addressing the climate change, I think everyone should focus on the youth empowerment. Like there is a huge number of youth around the world. And uh, if youth can, youth can engage in the climate change or climate education, they can achieve anything. So uh, recently, like the, the COP20 is, is coming for the climate change and some kind of conference, as you said, like that. I think everyone should consider that you should be included in the uh, in the decision making levels. Sometimes, like who 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 are the who are the skilled or the skilled youth about the climate change or who are working for the climate change uh, from in their own community. So, if a global policy is de developing, if the, that people include in the policy and he can he can give his uh, give his opinions to develop a policy i think it will work better rather than like the people who are not directly engaging in in the community action thank you and my last question to you is what advice would you give to young people who are just starting out, who are concerned about climate change, but maybe feel hesitant to do something because they're too young, they don't have financial resources, whatever the limitations that young people you know, may have, what would you, um, what advice would you give them to get started? What advice okay. would you give yourself like 10 years ago? <laughs> okay, 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 great, yes. So my first advice will be start now. Just start now, like, you are thinking that you don't have the financial resources or you don't have the uh, have the ideas like why you can't arrange a, a, a session like why you can't arrange an online session like what is reachable to you you are spending time online so you can online you can start an online session with the people who are working for the climate change like in your area firstly focus on your local area whose people are working for the climate change or who are working for the environment you should contact with them don't feel hesitate just keep in mind that start now and and go and then you will small uh, you will gradually develop yourself and if you if you contact with, with your local leaders young leaders who are working as the climate change i'm sure that they will appreciate your ideas whatever your old is they would appreciate ideas because when a person is thinking about the climate or when a person is thinking about the health, he's, he's thinking about the world. Like he's leading a project as example, like he's thinking about the world, what will be the next, uh, what will be the condition of the world after 10 years or 20 years for the climate change. So if you reach him, he will definitely appreciate. Like if it's can possible to arrange an online session, you can you can arrange an offline session. Like you can invite them to come here voluntarily to uh, to take a session in your school or in your college. Like you can't uh, start a big event for the very first time. You have to start gradually, like a slow event. Then you can reach to the big event, even in. Even one day, I believe that if you are committed to the climate change, you can go to the international level, like COP28 or these kind of events. I love it. Start small 
and find people around you to work with, right? Find a community. Yes, yes, that's yes. A really powerful advice. Well, thank you so much, Pronto, for your time. It was wonderful to learn more about both of your initiatives. You're doing incredible work. And we're really grateful for your uh, commitment and your time as FXB Climate Ambassador. And, you know, we look forward to working with you on many of the initiatives that we discussed in our Climate Ambassadors meeting and just really grateful for everything that you do and being part of the FXB Climate Advocates community. Thank you so much. Wow. Yes, Karina. Thank you, too. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for watching us. Thank you.